wins it, that would just probably cement that. Yeah, so looking at Vortex, he started with his Secret Paladin and got a pretty good start with Secret Keeper, Haunted Creeper, Shielded Minibot, Mustafa Bal, and the Coin. So Coin, Shielded Minibot feels pretty good as Synthetic has opened with a Flame Imp. And looking at hands on both sides here, they've both got pretty good starting hands. Like Double Peddler is fantastic, Double Creeper now. And this is really going to be a, a pretty fierce battle for ball control, I think, early on. Yeah, it really is, and um, Synthetic's going to have to decide how he wants to manipulate these extra cards and how he wants to, when he, how and when he wants to proc the spiders, because as one twos, they're not much good, but they deal with muster guys, they deal with divine shields, and it's just going to be about a lot of planning from what it looks like a relatively simple hand that actually isn't. Yeah, Soulfire is the go-to pick there from the Peddler. And um, going to be useful to clear off those slightly bigger, more mid-range minions from the Paladin, like the Keeper of Alderman. And we've just seen the Shredder come up. So he might actually, being Zoo, you can afford to just Soulfire. You know, you're going to tap into all, you know, a lot of other cards. Slight Spectator bug here is the Doom Guard does not cost zero mana, because that would be slightly overpowered. Um, but the other, uh, the other Peddler is coming down, Flame Imp. Tournament attendee and the Murloc called the Grimscale Oracle. He takes the flame in though, plays it just for to gain that tempo, kills off the mini bot, and he's uh probably, synthetic's probably feeling pretty good about this. Yeah, it's pretty decent. Uh, the zoo is a favourite in this matchup because of the way it can control the board. Not a huge favourite, but definitely a favourite. Uh, we do hope that Doom Guard isn't one of Blizzard's new nerfs. Um, nerfs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's a Blizzard nerf, right? Who knows? And so. <laughs> Picking up the Knife Juggler in this situation with these Creepers is also really powerful. He's got nothing to kill them into yet, but next turn he'll be able to run them into either a Shredder or a Secret Keeper and get a million juggles. Yeah, and um, one of the cards that actually uh, can decide this matchup is Implosion from the, uh, from the Warlock, because the Paladin doesn't normally run a Consecrate. Uh, we've seen someone run Consecrate. I can't remember who it was. It might have been Vortex. Um, but, like, because they don't, and, like, trading, battling for board control with minions that look exactly like this board, obviously implosion of killing off a minion and summoning a lot of 1-1 tokens, potentially, is really impactful in this matchup. Yeah, and already Vortex being forced to trade, and when a Secret Paladin starts trading for the board, it's not doing as well as it could be. Yeah, and look uh, at the value these creepers are going to get as well. It's going to be pretty, yes. pretty nice. Oh, and there's the implosion. It wouldn't surprise me if we saw implosion onto the um, onto the shredder. He could hold off a turn and try and um, juggler implosion, but I think this feels pretty nice to just potentially kill off the shredder, and then the creepers, you know, can do a lot of work the following turn or this turn and just picking up the one ones. Yeah, or, or he could just tap and then juggler and trade in the creepers, which will also do an extra four damage that way. Um, I think I'll go with the implosion as well, but he may decide that's slightly risky because of what might come out of the shredder and so on. Whereas the other way, there's a good chance you just leave him with like a 4 1 and some 1 1s. But no, he's going to go with the implosion by the look of things. Yeah. I like this because the issue is if he plays the juggler and the shredder doesn't die. Then um, the that's the second light roll. Wow! This and he rolls four <laughs> and gets the the good roll on and the light. The issue there was that if he'd ran the creepers in with the juggler, the juggler almost certainly dies the following turn. Whereas with the implosion, you build the board up, you hopefully deal with the shredders, the plan which it sort of worked out, um, and and then and then you can do like you know juggler and creeper things because the odds on the opponent having a consecrate. And using the two one ones to prop the creeper, it is something to think about. But the odds on it actually happening are really low, to be honest. Yeah, it's likely that your opponent keeps the creepers um, alive so as not to split them up, and then that just gives you such a good juggle. And it'll be bothering Vortex because he'll know that's an option. But you you can't just surely just go um, propping propping the creepers here because. I if he hasn't got the juggler, you look really hmm. silly. A part of me thinks like the two one ones into the two of the imps, and then play Cockhammer onto the zero <laughs> five, and then play Secret Keeper Repentance. I kind of like that line. That definitely you, wouldn't be the worst line. You, um, you create it's not a good taunt because it's a uh, because it you know doesn't actually deal any damage, but it soaks up and buys you a little bit more time and makes Mysterious Challenger a little bit better the following turn. Yep. That's definitely, and yes, yeah, not messing about here with this. He's just straight out there with his juggler. Let's see what we can shoot. Um, you run into the two, three first. That gives you more chance of hitting minions rather than running just, into the one, one. Just right? think for a second here. If he cockhammered that zero five, those creepers can't die. 
<laughs> which would have been nice. sick. <laughs> that would have been disgusting. <laughs> um, he'd had to have done something. Yeah, there was nothing to do. That would have been amazing. So yeah, he does get the uh, the juggler off. He has dodged the repentance, which is pretty key when you're holding a doom guard. And now we might even see next turn just power of Doom doomguard and sod the soul fire. Um, yeah. Because you're getting a lot of value, you're putting a lot of damage on the board, and you know repentance isn't going to happen as the mysterious challenger goes down. And this is the issue with secret pal in here sometimes, where you mysterious challenging. Uh, Mr. playing Mysterious Challenger on a board that he has so many little tokens and stuff to just prop the first secret, so that Noble Sacrifice isn't really getting amazing value whatsoever. And this is going to be a flame in, into your play here. Um, going to use the Power of Overwhelming to make sure this 6-6 six, six dies. We're going to have a flame in. We're going to put a 5-7 on the board, and we're going to say, have you got Dr. Boom into Tyrion? If you have, you might have a chance. Yeah, um, well, to be honest, uh, let, let's see what happens here. He kills off the 9-8, which is insane. Like, the it one is so six big. is going to be a nuisance after the competitive spirit prox. Yeah, but with the doom guard, right? The doom yeah, guard just kills matter. it. Yeah, it's just going to be a. Yeah, he'll just take time to kill it. You're right. And... Whoa! What? Whoa! Synthetic, yeah. put that soul fire back. Do you really want a fifty-fifty doom guard? Looks like he does. Guys are badass. Okay. Never ever <laughs> in danger. Absolutely no doubt. Okay, we it's get... just lethal, your opponent. Why worry about messing around killing? Okay, we've gained an invisible doom. Did he throw away the doom guard? No, he's played it. This is an invisible doom guard, and it's so, yeah, I can see what happened. He, he did get lethal with the. Um, he played the doom guard, and he did get lethal. It didn't get thrown away. Okay, just give me one second, guys. I'm sorry about that. We will just have to get into air. We'll go re back into spectator mode because that got very interesting with the the zero mana invisible doom guard. If there's if there's ever an overpowered card, it's definitely that one. Zero mana invisible doom guard. Um, also available in Paladin. I hear now they're going to make it next set. Just because you know they've lost a card or two, they're going to be really sad. You heard it from Lorinda first, guys. Um, yeah, you know, all the Uther fans have been writing in complaining. So we're now going to have Synthetic playing Warlock. Um, I assume you haven't got pictures yet. So yes, Synthetic we have... playing Warlock and Vortex playing Paladin. So yeah, that makes so, good sense. Yeah, so we're going to see the Zoo versus the Paladin, um, and you know, see if it sort of goes the other way this time. We'll have to have a look. Uh, just give me one sec. It was Synthetic that took that game, right? Yeah. Oh, hang on. Why yeah, is this is the zoo? problem I've got. Why is he queued zoo again? I'm not sure. Let me just ask Vortex. Did something happen there? To do with that spectator book? Because I just saw a normal game end, but... Oh, one revive. Oh, it's best of seven with a revive. There we go. Okay. So, Sorry about zoo that, guys. Paladin rematch. Um... Interesting then that Synthetic chooses to use his revive straight away and he likes this zoo deck. he's won this mind game here with Vortex, expecting Vortex to maybe try and sneak a win with the Paladin deck whilst whilst the zoo was out of the picture. But no, he's just gone straight back in and go, no, you're not having that. We're going to just go straight into the revive mode and have the same match again. Okay, uh, so let's Synthetic see if... definitely getting the best of that mind game there. Yeah, let's see if it goes out any better for Vortex or if Synthetic's going to run away with it. And this is a pretty good start for Vortex, actually. The Divine Favor is rough because against Zoo it's very difficult because they can they recharge their hand with tap, but normally spend it as well. You normally float mana as Zoo later on. So to get a good Divine Favor off is actually very difficult. But the two secrets, and one of them being Redemption, is pretty good for the Secret Keeper, especially because he can follow up with uh, Creeper. So there's just any outcome feels great. And there's Blessing of Kings as well. This is going really well for Vortex so far. And we haven't seen this Divine Favor. Um, it's, you know, that the last game went pretty deep and there was no Divine Favor shown. So not the last game, but like the last round before that as well. Um, against Blackout, against the Rogue. And it's just going to draw in a million cards. And I'm not a big fan of Divine Favor often, but when it does its thing in this position, it's going to be a blowout quite possibly. Yeah, it's very much like, uh, you know, it, it, it wins you some games and does nothing some other games. So, uh, yeah, I've up until, I think very recently, I've played a Secret Paladin with a one-off Divine Favor, just to, you know, just to slot it in there for the good moments. Yep. But going back to the actual game, the Soul Fire throwing away Doom Guard, I mean, he does have Lothar and an Egg, so it's not horrendous, but he probably wanted to see that Doom Guard, because other than the Keeper of Alderman, Paladin doesn't really have a good way to deal with that card. And but by the time it does, the Doom Guard's actually already 
charged and done something. So he's already got value from it. But what a way to deal, deal with a divine favor, right? Just play your soul fire early. Don't mess around. Yeah. And that Go plays on. around. Oh, he won't have wanted that, Feels obviously. Bad, wow. Anything but that. Yeah. So just to reiterate, guys, the finals are best of seven with one revive. So Synthetic won this exact matchup in the first game, but chose to revive his Warlock. So now he has to win with his Warlock again, and then these other two decks that are left. And um, Vortex choosing to hold on to his Cog Hammer here. And he's hoping to get something from the Divine Favor. He'll be kind of upset he hasn't managed to get a huge Divine Favor off. But the nature of this matchup is that you've got to keep the board against the Zoo no matter how many cards. And if that means that your Divine Favor is not so good, well, so be it. Yeah. And that's how he's gone with it. This Secret Keeper doing some work as well. Even at 5-1, it's very threatening. Uh, if the Cog Hammer goes on anything but the Secret Keeper, this is pretty nice. Oh, typical. Probably yeah, interesting have... that he chose not to use uh, a point of damage to his face there. Um, choosing instead to go this Ooh. way, so that's that's clever. Yeah. Because it's gone on the secret keeper, he's decided to just take this chance to get rid of the egg. Yeah, you make the you make the best of not a bad situation, but just not your favoured situation. You probably wanted to just make an awkward one-one divine shield taunt and uh, keep the secret keeper as like the uh, the non-focus target. But now the fight. I mean, who'd have thought five-one? Right. Do you think that was a bit Causing... greedy there? He chose not to divine favour and instead make a one-one. Um. What do you feel about that? He would have only gained one card, right? He'd only gained one card, but that might be one card more than he's actually ever going to get. But he got a 1-1 one, one instead, so it's almost the same thing, I guess. Yeah, and I think uh, um, because he has Boom, and he's in such a good position, I think it's fine. I think he can wait. Yeah, that's fair enough. Like, you're guaranteed a 1-1 one, one anyway, so your Divine Favour would have to have been pretty good to yeah, be best. Yeah, and the issue is, next turn, you're playing Boom... You don't, you don't need the other card. Like You're not going to draw a card that's better than Boom next turn. And also, as we've said multiple times uh, in this matchup, like the board is everything. And Lothab just, just throws itself onto the 5-1 Secret Keeper yeah. and says, you know what, have your full value, you crazy, crazy minion. Yeah, Synthetic looked at that board there for a good 60 seconds thinking, is there a way that I don't lose my 5-5 to a 5-1 here? And yeah, you, you can just feel the pain of, I've really got to do this. It's all I can do, because otherwise he kills my thing with his dudes and his weapon, and that's well, no use either. What's kind of funny is, he should probably just throw the dudes and the weapon in it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah I was going to say. He's had enough of trying to puzzle that out, and yeah. He came to that conclusion about the same speed we did, I think. Of, yeah. um, actually, he's still got the same play. Yeah, actually, this is rough. <laughs> So that is going to be 1-1, one, one, and uh, we'll find out what deck Vortex chooses to revive as it happens. So we won't know until he's picked it. It's not something they have to pick straight away, I believe. I think they can actually pick it on the fly. So the early uh, revive from Synthetic is interesting because it sort of maybe gives him uh, a little less flexibility in the choice of um, what to revive against what's left of Vortex, I suppose. Yeah, it's it's like that. Like there, Synthetic chose to revive the zoo because he realised that Vortex would probably go straight back to the Paladin. Now it didn't work out for him because he lost the game, but in terms of the percentages, he got a good deal in in reviving it straight away, catching Vortex by surprise. Because people tend to think, "Oh, I'll use my revive at a suitable moment." You don't expect them to just go, "Hey, I'm going to play it again right now. Deal with this." Yeah. Uh, now it's... Vortex has the same decision. Does he want to take that same chance? Yeah, definitely, and um, we'll we'll see we'll we we'll see the guys actually just taking some time over their pick. Obviously, this is the finals, right? This is to take that title. And Vortex definitely wants back-to-back -back winter titles here, um, but we're just gonna see what goes on. Whether Vortex actually revives first himself, um, I don't think the rule is you have to revive the the class you win with first. Um, I don't think that's the rule, but we'll see. No, Vortex nope. has chosen to go with Warlock. And Revive does add a bit of um, mind games to a format that is known for not having many mind games. So that's a good thing, I think. Yeah, it's kind of uh, kind of interesting. It's something we don't see too often as well. So these players having to sort of adapt to this format. Um, Conquest 1 ban is sort of half common in terms of seeing it as a format. Uh, you know, tournaments have happened quite often, but then when you get to the finals and it's uh, suddenly a best of seven, and it's not like best of seven, you use all four of your decks. It's um, it's actually uh, 
best of seven, you only use three decks because the ban still exists, yet yeah. you can revive one of those three decks. Yeah, I think it's good when they make formats like that where you have to you know, really do multiple layers of planning different things. So, and that's, that's made this far more interesting already. And like, like I say, we're now going to be looking at Vortex, wondering when is he going to revive a deck, if at all. Will he wait till right at the end and have a cho bigger choice, or will he go from the smaller choice and try to get a better matchup? So. Yeah, and Vortex is Dark Peddler. Nothing too amazing. Mortal Coil's always okay, but against Druid, you don't normally have a an easy way to pull off a coil, I suppose. And it was interesting that his mulligan looked a pretty decent hand to all intents and purposes. He had like Dark Bomb into um, Imp Gang Boss, which normally would just be a snap keep against almost anything. And he decided to go for some beefier stuff, um, which was interesting to me. Yeah, the um, Shredder coming down is pretty nice for Synthetic here. Ooh. Ooh. This is rough. He gets a coil target. Always feels nice to just Blackwing Corrupt or a Shredder, but he's actually yeah. like, obviously one mana off, so. Oh, the 1 1. A Ooh. very tempting drop. So, do you just YOLO Bran here? Hmm. Mm. And maybe not. Maybe not. Because so, you're pretty safe, and if you tap, you need <laughs> to. You want a dragon, right? You want yeah. like, another dragon. So, next turn, you want Blackwing. And then the turn after you want Twilight Drake. Although, this is actually, if Bran doesn't die and Synthetic plays a Drake or a Druid of the Claw or something, you know, another five drop that Druids are fairly well known for, mm -hmm. then Blackwing Corrupt is going to decimate this, like, pretty hard. Yeah, and the one thing with a the tap there for me is that he's got a load of five, sixes, and sevens in hand. So when do you actually play, like, he's going to play on curve, these cards. So the card you tap into is probably a little bit less value than a traditional tap. Oh, but Living Roots and the 1-1 one -one is actually going to clear Bran yeah. up. So suddenly, this as your Drake is not feeling too hot. But when you draw into Lothar, I suppose that's pretty reasonable. Yeah, Lothar, really the perfect answer right now, or seemingly anyway. Um, I'd struggle not to play Lothar here. Yeah, I'd struggle not to. Yeah, it's a final. You've got to think what else might you do. And the other option, I guess, is just to challenge the 4-4 with your 5-4 Corruptor. It won't have a huge number of great targets in this match. So just what? playing it out there, hitting the face, and just squaring off. To another save option later. you could consider, if there was another dragon in hand, would be Soulfire Twilight Guardian, right? But, yes. But the 2-4... Um, sorry, not 2-4. The 2-6... Yep. Uh, Non-taunted just isn't worth it. it. And the fact you discard a card. So Lothab's going to be okay. Uh, Synthetic does have a pretty reasonable answer to this in the terms of Emperor Thorison and reducing five cards in hand. Not major cards to be reduced. I suppose it's good removal. But um, but overall, this means that now Vortex has to kind of run Lothab into the Emperor. Yeah, when you're playing against Druid and they reduce five cards, all you think those cards are endless forces of nature and yeah. endless savage Double wars. combo, go. <laughs> you just know you're going to die to a million damage in two turns. It's not always the case, but it makes planning so difficult because mm. you've, got to, you've got to be aware that they might have the combo. But you've also got to be aware not to panic too much. Cause... Do, now, does he run the... Lo Ooh, okay. The, a ballsy play is to run Lothab into the Drake. And then sort of reverse the position on the board and say, now you have to kill two of my minions. Um, you scared and, me. Yeah, we, that is obviously scary and it's almost never right to leave an Emperor up. And it would have got very heavily punished by uh, as your Drake swipe. So, But you are right. It's worth to, like, to anybody who is newer to Hearthstone, look at all of your options. Uh, sometimes you look at them, you'll think, why did I think that? But if you don't look at them, the times that it's actually good, you won't spot them. And you definitely should look at everything. And the Druid's just starting to get in control of this now. Yeah, this boom play is interesting. Uh, he can Blackwing Corrupt and Coil one of the Drakes. Um, and maybe even Soulfire. Maybe Soulfire. And just keep your 5-4 as safe as possible. It's definitely tough. I think the problem Ooh. with Soulfire... Oh, that's he, nice. He picked up another... Uh, oh, God, I bet he throws the Dragon. <laughs> oh, heal about Okay. That's, that's okay, reasonable. So be, he'll be happy with that. He'll be happy with that. If you could have picked a card, he'd have lost the Hillbot, I think. Um, yeah, the only problem with the Soulfire here is now that he's kind of all in on keeping this board for, till the end of the game. Because he's not going to win through card advantage ever now. 
And yeah, so, I think which is what you need to do against Druid. You need to have that board. I mean, we say that against a lot of matchups, and it's true. Yeah, I think um, with the Twilight Guard, you know, it's such a chunky minion to try and deal with. Um, having one Twilight Guardian and then being able to quite easily tap, uh, potentially into BGH as well, could be pretty strong next turn. Yeah, and he's going to be able to start putting a little bit of pressure on now because Synthetic doesn't have an obvious play to regain the board here. I mean, he can just drop Boom, which is a thing that obviously gets the board. Um, but he'll be seeing things that we're not in the opposing hand. As it turns out, the Boom looks pretty good here. But. Yeah, the only thing to bear in mind is that the Boom is played by Synthetic with probably with the premise that these two minions, you know, the boom doesn't survive next turn. It either gets BGH or these two minions uh, kill it because Vortex cannot just leave it up, right? You know, coming into turn nine against Druid, you cannot just leave up a full Doctor Boom board. Yeah, it's, you know, especially when you've got reduced cards in your opponent's hand. Um, you're just thinking Double Savage Raw kills me, uh, this kills me, that kills me. And then you've got to think, but if I kill it off and do nothing, all that happens is my opponent plays down a 7-drop and he's got the board again. So you've got to find a way to manipulate it so you've still got some board, but you kill most of the things. And yeah, that's exactly what he's going and to the do interesting here. play here is he, he has to go for the coil, because if he doesn't, he's dead to combo anyway. And he's chosen to play his boom before the coil, which means he's trying to finish off the other boom bot with the chain reaction there. Yeah, or at least soak damage from the, the bot. So it doesn't, because again, if he kills one boom bot and it hits him for three, then it's still lethal from the combo. So because yeah, you know so... either way, so um, just try to re like reduce as much as possible. Um, he would oh, vortex would probably just love to just draw any dragon next turn and then slam double twilight guardian. Definitely, like, that's such a such a hard block on the druid and very difficult to deal with because the health is at six, so that's tough. And even like keeper the grove, where you can silence one. But if you silence two, that's suddenly like pretty much your whole turn. And he he may if he draws a a mid sized minion, he may even keep that for one more turn. Um, play the heel bot and a mid sized minion to not die. Now he won't because the board is too powerful against him. Yeah. Now it's just tap slam and hope you get another one. I think. Yeah, I think you have to play the more expensive guardian here. Uh, he may forgo tap. Hmm. It's tough, because the problem is, every single turn now, and this is one of the issues a lot of people have with Druid, at least at the moment, is when you take some damage uh, from Druid, and it starts to sort of edge towards late game, every single turn you pretty much have to clear the board, because you can just die from combo. And then, <laughs> although, even if they don't have it, you kind of have to play like that, unless it's literally going to lose you the game anyway. So, um, this is definitely a rough spot for Vortex, and something we've all been at when, when playing against Druids. Yeah, and it's not like it's a thing you can predict. Like, say something like Flame Strike, which is a really, really powerful card. You can play in such a manner, if you know it's in your opponent's deck, that they would have had to have played it to do something. But Savage Raw is a card that you can't force them to use in another way. It just sits in the hand... You can't test for it. You can't make them use it to clear very often. So it's just really difficult to play against a Savage Raw in a way that is skillful, other than by keep clearing. Yeah, exactly. Um, a lot of the time, Savage Raw, if it's not used with combo, it's used in like Dire Straits. It, well, it's either used in <laughs> Dire Straits, and it, you know you, the Druid's really behind and has to do something big, or they use it because they're just pushing so much damage anyway. They have like five minions on the board and Savage Roar is suddenly 10 to 12 extra damage. Yeah, do you think we'll still be having that discussion in three months' time? Do you think it will just be a card that is... Hey, remember when Savage Roar was really good? Um, <sighs> I think in three months' time, in all honesty, either the card changes to the base set will either have nerfed the combo somehow or mm -hmm. Druids will still be Druids. <laughs> you know, like... It's, Brilliant. It's, because go go back in time, right? This Druid deck hasn't changed in its form too much. Like, okay, no Shredders, fine, we put Yetis back in. Do, do you know what I mean? And the deck still does the same thing. So. This is some clear, by the way. Yeah, that's actually uh, pretty that impressive. Hellfire was really needed right then. And it's definitely put Vortex back in with at least a small chance of uh, winning this game. In his mind, he'll probably think he's losing because Synthetic's down to 10 cards and doesn't have the force in hand. But... But there, uh, you know, and and then on top of all this, when you see an ancient of law come down, boom, two more cards. You're like, Oof, okay. Um, yeah. And the issue as well, 
the, the way Vortex wins is by drawing cards and coming into his, his big stuff and maybe some more heal if he's got any left. But the issue is he's used so many key cards and if he taps, he's dead. Right, you know, like he, that's his mindset. Yeah. He cannot spam tap because he's thrown one heal bot and used another one. This is a pretty good pickup because he has dart bombs. So this is the sort of thing he wants. But again, he would but, love to tap here, but 14 is the magic yeah. number. But yeah, you so just can't, he can't yeah. try and protect his Twilight Guardian, get a dragon to do anything with. And that puts him in this position. And which the is problem okay. is, the second force of nature is drawn. He's dead at 16 anyway because of the living roots. Yeah. So. so yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah um, I mean there's still a chance you know uh, Synthetic's Force of Nature's could be the bottom cards in his deck so it there's still you know five, so five more turns potentially uh, yeah. four more with Wild Growth now and he can still if this draws Force of Nature this is still game this turn because he has Innovate but it's Swipe still pretty reasonable I yeah. actually kind of like Swipe Innovate out low Feb every miss is still just not that bad right now <laughs> Like, oh no, you didn't get the card you wanted, but it's still not that bad. Mm. And just repeat until you win. I mean, let, hang on, let's think about this. Next turn, he can Savage Raw, Swipe, and Living Roots. So at the least, that's six, that's eight damage. Instead, now he's going for the one ones to just yeah. make Savage Raw burst even harder. And you can't Hellfire that because then you're down to 13 as well. Yeah. There's another have dragon, second. though. And he's just used his Keeper of the Grove for damage. Yep, so that 3-6 will at least buy some more time. Ooh. Or does it? Does Savage Raw Swipe actually just plow through it anyway? Vortex is now uh, paused to do the maths as well. There's 12 if uh, with Swipe Savage Raw. Because uh, the Corruptor trades with the Lothar. Yep. Uh, this has 6 health, obviously. So um, it will be 4 from the Keeper, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12. Mm. Yeah, it's 12, so. No, it's less than 12. Oh, no, because it's a swipe. Yeah, okay. It's 10, I think. Yeah, it's 10, because he has to swipe and then use his face to kill the 3 6. Okay, so. He must be getting so frustrated. Yeah, I uh... think he should still Savage Raw, to be honest. Because, can he rely? I mean, obviously, let's have a look. Because he has five cards left and two of them are Force of Nature, right? So uh, maybe he yeah. just it might be his one. Time. Maybe we missed a clear when we yeah. were chatting in the middle game, but he's got at least one left. So maybe he bides his time, but you also have to think I have three minions on the board. Is, for, is, is Savage Raw just worth it? I mean, you. Uh, your, your two four survives here, right? So if you do swipe and trade everything in and your face, or maybe just Savage Raw. I don't know. I don't think I want to Savage Raw here. Yeah, Swipe Shredder seems okay as well. Yeah, and just Hero Power and kill off the minion. Or just Hero Power, maybe. And don't ruin your guys, and then next time you've got Savage Raw. Yeah, I mean, at this point, let's be honest. You've yeah. seen two heal bots, like what you're actually afraid of. Yeah, you, you, yeah you're right, it's like... You must be afraid of some sort of crazy combo. Ooh, combat. Farseer. Um, so he needs to um, Farseer, Owl the 4-3, Peddler into uh, Soulfire. Mortal Coil. Or, or, or Coil, yeah. But he needs to kill the Shredder, right? That represents the most damage. Yeah, because he must be thinking... I mean, he's been playing around combo, Ooh. obviously, for so long now. Okay, this will be interesting. What, what an interesting tap... Because what are you tapping for? That's my, you know, like that's he's got, my. He's interest. got Farseer, right? So he can okay. go back to sixteen, I guess. Yeah, but he still dies to combo. He still dies. Whereas if he'd not tapped, then like, what's what's he tapping for? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, surely you try and roll for the uh, soul fire, kill the shredder with silence as well, so the shredder's off the board, and then that'll be what you you would have been on. Fifteen. I mean, I suppose it still would have been lethal because you can't kill off the keeper of the grove as well. So I suppose you just play. Oh no. Would have been on 16, would have been on 18. So, yeah, it still would have been lethal, so it didn't matter, I guess. Just trying to work out if he can win this game, because he knows, he thinks he's lost, but we can see that. Is that lethal now? 4, 8, 9, plus 6. One short still? I feel like the game is trolling me, but I think that's still one short. Uh, so, it's going to be 6. Uh, it's 14. Two sh oh no, he can hear a power as well, right? Yeah, so yeah. 15, one shot. You're right. Good man. So, 
Maligos into something is like nine damage, like a soul fire, and you've got seven in front. That's sixteen. Maybe there's some convoluted miracle of events here that actually wins in this game. Um, wow, with synthet- only what, four cards left in synthetic. This deck. feels really weird that synthetics trading. Um, I would have just put him to one. Then what's yeah. his top deck? Do you know what I mean? Like, what is his actual top deck that's left? I mean, this is still yeah. okay. Uh, this is obviously super safe because he almost certainly draws the uh, Force of Nature next turn. Um, four, eight, nine, nine, nine. This is where you start checking your deck list and wondering if you actually put it in there. Yeah. But so also, this, this is when Vortex either taps, in which he thinks he has something left, maybe an Argus, um, or, oh, here we go, Abusive doesn't help. So that's going to be game now. I mean, he's not actually dead or on, on his view of the board, I suppose. But we know he's dead because he can't actually kill any of these minions off now. So that is going to be 2-1 to Synthetic. In what was a really weird, like... There it is. Does he play it? type of death. He's so he's angry. Forever he, he's so angry he doesn't even play the Force of Nature after all of that. Wow, that's pretty much... Yeah, that's not fair on the force. It's it's turned up just it in time. It did its best. <laughs> it's not gonna use you, dude. Made me sweat. So, Vortex does still have the opportunity to play any of his decks because he hasn't used his revive and he has only one with Paladin. Um, Synthetic has also got the access to all of his decks because he's revived the one that was lost, but it win again. So, we are still Druid Paladin and. Oh, he can't use his Druid now because he's used his Revive, that's right. Yeah. So it's Paladin or Warlock for Synthetic and any of the Paladin, Warlock or Druid for Vortex. Yeah, when you're getting into this game, it is 2-1 to Synthetic. He needs to win two more games to win this best of seven and Vortex needs to win three more. So it's going to be a little bit rough on Vortex's end. He is locking in his Warlock again and it is going to be matched up versus Synthetic Zoo. And now this matchup is... um can potentially be pretty rough for the Maligos because you don't run... The the way you yeah, the, these two sort of Warlock variants used to deal with each other was the old Handlock used to just double Molten Giant Argus. And then you go, okay, Zoo, how are you actually going to get through this? And they can't, then they lose. Um, and look at this hand. Carry on. Uh, and, and Maligos doesn't have those cards and only really runs Twilight Guardians for Torn. So Zoo can actually just rush Maligos down without having to even think or worry about a card like Molten Giant. So, and and as you just said, uh, Lauren, the Synthetic has a pretty pretty reasonable opening hand. I think I'd be okay with this as the Zoo yeah. player. Um, on the other side, though, Vortex does have options. He has a Hellfire already, a Soulfire if things get really bad. He's just picked up the Twilight Guardian, so coin Twilight Guardian next turn could actually happen quite easily and do some work for him. Yeah, and then you've got um, a potentially crazy-sized Twilight Drake if you can hide your brand behind that Twilight Guardian, for instance. Um, and that could just eat up a lot of minions. Um, but Synthetic, not messing around, he's drawn his brand, which is going to put a hmm. tremendous amount of potential damage on the board. And he's yeah, just... I think Synthetic just realised if he played brand now, it would be wrong, because he should play the Egg and the Squire, and then next turn he brands an uh, Abusive Sergeant's the Egg, right? Yeah, I, does this I feel like a powerful. misplay? Because um, what's the I mean, two four doing? Like, I guess he's saying, "How do you punish this board? Do you want to hellfire and I get to keep a bran, or do you want to like soulfire bran and I just hit you for five more? Thank you very much." Whereas if you play the egg, um, then you're not putting as much pressure on immediately, and maybe you then have to get through a twilight guardian, which we can see he could have got through, and so it feels. I would have played the egg but I'm not willing to yeah. call it a misplay because I know how powerful Synthetic is. Yeah, uh, I mean... I would have su- played the Egg with the backup of Bran and Buff. I suppose the, uh, the, the, the other way to look at it is that he can abusive one of these minions and get double buff from Bran. Uh, mm-hmm. Ooh, but Soulfire. See, this wouldn't have been weak to removal. That's my frustration. Because even like Dark Bomb Coil could have happened. You know, that there's definitely options. But he could have done that. And then he still has Power Overwhelming for the egg. So he does have another egg proc. So it's not like he was all in on that. But that removal from Bran's definitely upsetting. Because now it's like, ooh. ooh he can kill uh, Vortex's Bran. But he could have got a lot of value from that egg. Yeah. No, I, I agree. Although it did mean that, he, that uh, Vortex did spend his turn basically doing very little which means that synthetic does have five power minions sitting on the board 
Um, he does have the option to play the egg, just buff something to kill the brand, hit for three for face. Okay, he's going to go with this, the direwolf. He's got so many options that yeah. I'm quite happy with that, the play. Even though it's not the play I would have made, it's still a play that makes sense. Yeah, I think the wolf's okay because it puts the minion on the board and, like, wolf feels bad when you don't prop the egg that it's buffing, but you have two procs. Like, you know, you have power overwhelming and abusive in hand, so you can prop that egg no matter what. So I think that's actually, um, it's actually fine to play the wolf. It, it puts on a, a, quite the threat, actually, because Vortex has just put a lot into dealing with Bran, um, and the wolf is actually worth a lot of damage. And now we're going to see, like, a power overwhelming... Um, maybe abusive is fine as well, just to make this clean and push for even more damage. Yeah, there's two turns running now. Synthetic's gone to make a play instantly, and then taking the time to breathe. It's like it is a big final for him, and he just chose to to step back a second and say, "Right, this is the play I think I do, but why make it instantly? There's a lot of money on the line. Why, why not just take my time?" These are the exact cards in the exact order he first touched them, but he's deciding to take his time. Yeah, um, I'm surprised it's taking this long because surely, yes, it's overkill by one, but why throw two minions when you can throw one, right? So uh, yeah. this is nice. This squire is going to get dropped in probably between the egg and the die wolf. Um, maybe next, actually, maybe next to the peddler. Yes. Yeah, okay, that's better. Yeah, yeah that's, more, that's more reasonable. Actually, shouldn't it be on the other side of the peddler, though, so that if you want to chain kill something, the divine shield doesn't mess that up? Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, I suppose now it doesn't matter. But yeah, I, I agree. Sure. You, you, and, probably, you, you and your decided, wise yeah. arena knowledge um, of, of true placements. Um, <laughs> and now, hmm, Juggler Argus continues to push the pressure. And now is it the point where, like, okay, heal bot, but heal bot just, re <laughs> you know, remakes this turn one turn later. Uh, what does it actually do? And there's no taunts, like we said. There's, you know, this deck doesn't normally run like Argus. It just runs those uh, Twilight Guardians, and that's the best it can do a lot of the time. The only thing this does on the rerun turn is allows your Owl to slow down this Juggler. But really, there's so much pain coming in this turn. So much pain. Oh, I'm anger. Is this not just potentially lethal? Uh, four, so six, it'll be five, ten, six, seven, twelve? eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, four. Yeah, it's potentially, it's lethal if he hits the Juggles, right? Right. Yeah. So there's one. Oh, That's like 5, 50, 50 6, 7, legal. 8, 9, 10. 12. And he's going to save it for yeah. last. Well, is he even going to do it? Yeah, it, you he's have gonna... to do it. You go take for it. Take the 50-50 and you've got a great 50 50-50 is such a high percentage chance. Oh, we missed it though. You're still putting to 1. You've just seen Healbot. Uh, right? Stopping from drawing. You've seen the Healbot. I think you're right. Yeah. You're not afraid of this 3-2 in any way, shape or form. Because be Shadow Flame doesn't clear it. So Synthetic's going to take almost certainly, unless we've completely yeah. lost it. Taparoo uh, into the Air uh, Guardian. 3-1 lead. It is the best of seven. He has revived and won with Zoo. And he is now down to his secret Paladin deck. And on the other side, um, Vortex can play anything still. And against Paladin, he will probably choose... I think he was happy playing the Warlock against the Paladin earlier. So I think he'll choose that. Yeah, and you are correct. He has gone in for the Warlock. Um, this is everything. Now, this is match point. Uh, Synthetic wins this, and he takes home the first place. If Vortex wins, we continue, and uh, Vortex continues with like, what's, let's be honest, is an uphill climb now for him. Yeah, um, he does possibly have to beat this deck twice, remember, talking about revive strategy, um, which might be relevant, but... Beat which deck twice? Um, the Warlock, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just if he chooses to revive it and play it again. Yeah. Which is why leaving a revive till later is usual, but it's why Synthetic didn't leave it till later because it was a surprise move, which was a really good idea at the time. And this is a great hand for Vortex here. Yeah, this is uh, pretty reasonable. You have the two, three, four, five drops. You have Brand to, to drop in there. And now I would be surprised if he didn't take the abusive. Because you get so much extra power from the Bran combo. He can heal for four with a Voodoo Doctor, which is something to bear in mind versus Paladin. But I think you kind of want to take the more proactive play a lot of the time. Yeah, and he's gone with that. It's a good call. Um, especially with the heal button in his hand, is a little bit of a um, backup anyway. And Bran works so well with Abusive because it's just a four drop. Uh, yeah. Whereas Bran with heal button is kind of clunky. So I think this is really good. Yeah, this is looking pretty reasonable. Um... And now Synthetic has a few choices. I kind of like Creeper. Um, I don't know whether I would coin the Avenge. 
Um, I guess it's okay to clear the 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, it buffs your secret keeper as well. It's, it's Just turn okay. 3 feels so bad. Yeah. Because turn 3 could have been coin shredder, that's all. But now this is less bad. Now it's a lot better, right? It's, yeah. um, just trust the deck, right? Yeah, Doctor you Six just command it, everybody it's to the secret top. piled in. Um, yeah, so now I would be a mate. Ooh, I mean, there's a thought for Owl on, on the gang boss, but why not just play Juggler, right? That, that's that's my view on this situation. You play Juggler, he probably kills it within gang boss, then Avenge happens, so, yeah. you know. And you do get to keep that Owl for something, you know, a 4-9 or 4-12 or something Twilight Drake. Who knows how bad it gets against you sometimes in this. Yeah. Um, keep the Owl for that occasion. And again, Vortex suffering from just not having the dragons in hand to uh, to deal with, you know, to, to buff uh, the, the dragon effects or the Twilight Guardian. And now, with this with the juggler surviving, <laughs> because again, you've got to play around these secrets, uh, it's just, you know, there's Shredder. And then next turn, he can probably owl like something that's going to get buffed. And as you laughed, I imagine that's because the juggler missed the... Uh, yeah, the, just the, don't want to make anyone want to smash you in the face instead. The, jug juggler. the juggler should read aim plus one damage to anything. Especially in the hands of Uther, who seems to be amazing at aiming things at the right time, at the right place. And it's actually sort of slowed him down. He's like, oh my god, I didn't expect that to do happen, so do I just go face now? Yeah, I was going to say, um, reading, but... Synthetic's only option is to go face. This is how you want to win this game. You just push, 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 push. And the fact that he has Mysterious Challenger up and ready for turn six, this Avenger's going to go down. And let's be honest, what's Vortex actually going to do about this? And again, we're in that same position. Oh, the Avenger was on the best target as well. Sorry, Lorinda. Because the Avenger was spread on a non-priority target. So now there's a 5-3 Secret Keeper, which is scary. The Juggler is one of the scariest two drops in the game. And there's still a Shredder on the board, so this is ridiculous. Yeah, and we're going to be in that same position as last game. It's like, we've got a heal bot that buys us nothing. It's just going to be heal bot. And we're making a 2-6 Twilight Guardian because we're out of options as well. Yeah, because we have to. <laughs> um, yeah, looking at the bottom of the screen, I tend to go that way, right? <laughs> um, yeah. So... And there's even reasonable plays now from Synthetic of playing the mini bot into hero power to do some clearing. Um, just to, let's see if these jugglers are true smock. Um, whether he borrowed this juggler from a hunter. Oh no, he didn't. Okay. Um, so, ooh, but the, so they're two bad juggles actually. He yeah. really wanted to kill off these one ones and continue the pressure. Um, he is going to get the value from the juggler though, uh, in terms of Kunis one one. I'm. So the reason he's doing this is the Twilight Guardian now either has to run itself and kill itself into the Shredder, or into the Scientist and be on one health. Uh, he, both options are pretty good for Synthetic because he either keeps the Juggler or the Shredder. Um, and now, again, just a desperation play of Vortex. I'd, I'm just going to play Emperor because I it's, just have to. Yeah, it's going to give him a, a way to heal right back up to nearly maximum, though. But he he might think he's got an okay chance with his Doctor Boom and his heal combo, but we can see double Doctor Six coming, which is never much fun, especially when you don't know what's coming behind it in terms of Booms yeah. and Tibians. I think you definitely killed this Emperor, though. Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. What do, you, what do you think? <sighs> we can see the hand, which always makes it harder to assess. I'm naturally a bit of a trader right it's a trading card game to some people you know it's actually a collectible and i tend to just kill the thing that's there in that position i think well my, my, main so issue, my main issue is he still has minions afterwards if these were normal minions fine you know it's not a problem because having minions on board as well as challenger is so much more powerful than just having challenger alone but the shredder is going to drop a minion and the minibot doesn't die because of the shield so i yeah. think it was better to just trade because emperor is definitely a scary card Oh my god, yeah. Doom Sayer incoming. Tend to think, how do I lose this matchup when I'm this far in front? And one of the ways you lose it is by giving them cards that don't cost anything, I suspect. Yeah. And versus Malilark. Like, what if he has Malagos? Like, you know, that's yeah. the scary. <laughs> what if he had Malagos, Dark Bomb? You know, like, now there's two Dark Bombs in hand and Soulfire or something. So, you know, like, this could be very scary with two procs. Yeah, I mean, maybe he just mathed it and realised that he needs precisely all these things plus a heal to win, and he was happy with that. Um, very possible that's the case, but... Ooh. 
So he Maybe. he taps and gives his opponent only needing three damage. Interesting. Yeah, both players really um, pushing their luck. Let's go with at this point. So now you're clear, right? Or do you just not bother now? Have you come this far and you say everything in his hand is already reduced so far? Damn it! I, yeah, I've you, gone this I think you I just, just carry on now. Again, though, like mm, the, oh, here we go. Okay, but this makes no sense. Why wouldn't you use the shield? Um, to, to protect against AOE, Hellfire, but, but yeah, okay. but Hellfire kills him. Do, do you know? Do you know what I mean? Like Hellfire does three damage to the wall. I mean, he's point, got right? every chance of being about to win his first big major. I'm still not going to say he's making mistakes, but maybe he's just, you know, you're, who knows what goes through your brain, right? Mm. Um, it, it just feels like the the plan there. Let's not kill it, and then let's kill it was was interesting, but he's going to be okay, I think. Well, yeah, but this is now going to be with the draw of that Maligos. It's going to be Bran into a double heal bot effect into a double Twilight Guardian effect, which effectively makes it a 4-6 torn. So that's pretty reasonable. Back up to 22. Twilight Guardian down. Still a 3-3 from the heal bot on the board. So, you know, reasonable stats to deal with this. We do see Tyrion's there, and we do see an Owl's there as well, though, uh, for Synthetic. So uh, I guess you go for the Owl here to to make the clear or do you just slam Tyrion okay uh, yeah the clear is actually really clean you do drop Tyrion yeah. here you save the owl yeah it's a shame I wanted to see like super Doctor Boom I thought I think I would have been entertaining <laughs> all the boom bots <laughs> just a, a Nixia boom um, but we're not going to see that and it's looking like Vortex is struggling here he needs, he's going to need to top deck Soulfire plus misplays in it by his opponent to have any chance I oh Consecrate is nice actually so um, it's a good time to show his head for the first time, right? Yeah, this is pretty reasonable. I don't think you use the six. You use the shield on Tyrion, right? Yeah. Because then, like the shield, like is for nothing. The six two attacks face. He still gets six damage, um, and the six two might survive. It might. Yeah, I, I've just got a feeling. Down. I've got a feeling in in my bones that the six two is gonna die, but it might survive. We'll see. You've got no smoke in you. You've got no. I've got to trust wait in for it, wait Six for it. in the team. Oh. oh, okay. I was completely wrong, and that's yeah, actually. Doctor Six never dies. He's impossible to kill. I think that's actually just game here, and um, we'll see what Vortex draws, of course. And there's no reason for Vortex not to draw and find out what's going down. But this is a rough board. This is definitely a rough board. Yeah, that doesn't do enough. He's gonna have to tap and have a miracle. And it's looking like Synthetic is going to beat last year's champion in the final and get a a win that, from what I've researched, you know, is is not been far away for some time. And he does stream. I'm sure you guys can find his stream if you want to as well. Yeah, and yeah. there we go. Synthetic takes it. What a run. What a run, actually. That's a well deserved from Synthetic and Vortex. We're doing really well, getting to the the uh, the finals of of the first big tournament he's played in quite a long time. Uh, but that's yeah, wow, not not a bad not a bad little, uh, little tournament overall, I'd say. No, not at all. And just to point out that in Group B, Synthetic beat Vortex in the winners match in that as well to come through into this group stage in the first, into this top eight in the first place. Oh really? <laughs> um, so he's beaten Vortex twice now, and it was three nil in the group stage, and four one in the final. So convincing. Hard to argue with that. Definitely, definitely. So yeah, that's going to be it. Uh, Synthetic is the champion uh, of the Assembly Winter 2016 tournament, and that is going to be it for us as well. We've been streaming and casting for quite a long time. It's been a pleasure, Lorinda, of course, as always. Um, yeah, thanks for having me, man. I enjoyed it. Oh no, no it's a pleasure. And um, yeah, it's been a lot of sets over the past couple of days. Good tournament overall. And thanks to all the viewers, guys. We had uh, a lot more viewers than I imagined, if I'm honest, because I know there's some other tournaments on and, you know, there's a lot of Hearthstone streams going around. But I'm glad that you guys wanted to see the English cast of this tournament. So that's pretty awesome. But for now, guys, that's going to be it. Um, thanks for all the follows on my channel as well. Pretty great. Uh, and yeah, we'll see what's going on. We'll see with hosting. I'm guessing you're not going to be streaming now, Lauren. I'm not going to be streaming. Yeah, I, I, are you as tired as I am? <laughs> 
Probably. Um, I put quite a bit of work into that, so yeah, I enjoyed <laughs> that thoroughly, and I don't think I will stream tonight because of it, So, but I'd rather have done this. This was great fun. Yeah, okay, brilliant. So make sure to follow Lorinda. He's been typing in Twitch chat. Follow him. He streams. He's one of the best uh, UK arena players and probably one of the best arena players all around, actually, and you stream fairly often. I'm not 100% sure on your schedule. Six days a week now. Oh, there we go. So Because it didn't used to be, did it, right? Didn't you speak? Yeah, okay, cool. Um, so yeah, uh, learn to follow that guy. He's pretty good, as you can tell from this casting. Pretty, pretty good, up and comer. And uh, and yeah, that's gonna be it for us, guys. So thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you guys later. Take care.